This needs some sugar. Oh. She gonna need some sugar next time. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing absolutely amazing today. So this is my, <laughs> this is my third video that I'm filming today and I worked a half a day earlier. So your girl has been going. I am tired, but I wanted to get this video out. So I just threw on this sweatshirt, some, some biking shorts, cause we can't we can't waste this face of makeup because I barely ever wear makeup. So I wanted to get another video out for you guys. So here we are. It is a favorites video and uh, about these favorite videos. So the last one I filmed was in February and I hadn't filmed one since because March is when quarantine started happening and I stopped filming for a while and all kinds of stuff happened. So um, I don't have any favorites videos since February, but I do have some July favorites that I want to share with you guys, like new stuff that I got this month, but there's stuff that I got over the past couple of months that are favorites as well that I wanna show you guys. So this is going to be my March through June favorites, I guess you can say. And then I'll probably do a July and August favorites, like combine that. And then I do have a black owned business haul slash favorites that I wanna get out for you guys as well. I say all that to say this is basically March through June favorites. We're a little behind, but it's okay, better late than never. So if you are interested in what my favorites have been over the past couple of months, just let's just get into the video first on the list are these levi's denim shorts i i'm in love with these babies i am um i've been looking for just some good quality basic denim shorts that i can wear pretty much any day every day with any top and i found these and i fell in love with them they are high-waisted and um they're a lighter wash than i would normally get they were out of the dark wash but i actually ended up absolutely loving this sort of lighter wash it's not the lightest wash but it's definitely a lot lighter than what i normally wear with denim which is normally a darker wash denim the hemline is unfinished so it has you know, the phrase and all that kind of stuff just to add a little bit of character. And it also has the staple Levi Brown, Levi patch on the back that just adds some character to the shorts as well. And also just kind of lets everyone knows like, don't think these are just any, any denim shorts. These are denim, Le Levi denim shorts. Okay, okay. So yeah, these are my first favorites in my fashion section of my favorites what next is this dress right here that i got from aritzia when i saw it on the model i just knew i had to have it i have been looking for a just a simple neutral color dress that i can throw on whenever i'm running errands but i don't want to look janky like i want to look cute just in case you know I see somebody, but I don't feel like putting in too much effort. And this is the perfect dress for that. It is spaghetti strap sleeves, or I guess it's not really sleeves. It's spaghetti strap and the straps are stretchy so it can kind of adjust or stretch to your torso. Uh, the material is, I think it's a cotton material, but it is either like double or triple layered. This thing is thick. It is such good quality and the color is, like a ashy brown, like a grayish brown, I guess. I don't really know. I definitely thought it was more of a pink, like a pinkish brown on the website. But when it got here, it was definitely more of like a ashy, dull brownish gray color. But either way, I do still love it. It has a slit on the side, so it shows some leg. Again, effortless, but still cute. And again, with most, if not all of Aritzia stuff that I have ever purchased, it is such good quality. Like this is a heavy dress. 
I have also been loving these Birkenstocks. Ever since I have been at home all day, every day, I just needed some comfortable but nice house shoes and also i go outside a lot because i have to take my dog out so i just wanted some shoes that i could just slip on that are super comfortable but are still fashionable some people don't think birkenstocks are fashionable i beg to differ i will say i do feel like these were kind of expensive for the fact that they are pretty much just rubber they were 50 bucks i want to say 45 or 50 bucks which i think is expensive just because bruh it's 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 plastic but i mean it's not they don't seem like they're gonna break or anything they're pretty thick they're they're not going anywhere so they're gonna last me so i'll get my 50 dollars worth out of them but i do feel like they could have been 30 birkenstock just saying these things are so comfortable like beyond comfortable and i also feel like they just kind of mold to the shape of your foot the more you wear them. I could be crazy, but I don't think I am. I also have a couple undergarments that I've been loving over the past couple of months. First is this bra from Nubian Skin. It is the Naked Bra. I did an entire video where I did a haul on a couple of Nubian Skin pieces that I purchased. This is a black owned lingerie undergarment business or company and she does nude color lingerie and undergarments specifically for people of color women of color um, both men and women this bra is the most comfortable bra i have ever worn in my life <laughs> kid you not i am not being dramatic so comfortable i'm probably gonna buy three or four more of these so that I can wear them every single day of the week pretty much. If you wanna see my full review on this bra and all the other stuff that I got from Nubian Skin, I will leave the video in the cards and also in the description box below. Also for undergarments, I bought these Bristol 6 or B6 nippies and I have always had trouble finding nippies that actually do the job, you know? Like they actually, cover up your nip and they also don't show through your clothing that has been the biggest issue for me no matter what kind of nippies or pasties i have purchased before you could always just see the line where the the actual pasty was which kind of defeats the purpose everyone that i saw that talked about these absolutely love them like no bad reviews so I bought them and I see what the hype is about. First and foremost, they have multiple shades. Therefore, you can actually find a shade that matches your skin tone. I think they only have three shades, so obviously it's not gonna match every single shade. I got the darkest shade and it just matches my skin and it's probably a little bit lighter than my skin, but I do think it's better than the lighter pasties that are out there. So I think it's still worth the buy. What I love about these is the fact that as you get further away from the center of the pasty or the nippy, the material gets thinner and thinner. So when you put on a shirt, you can't see the outline of the pasty. This is a summer staple for me because I hate wearing bras in the summer. I have been breaking out really since the beginning of quarantine, and I'm not sure if it's just the recycled air being that I live in a condo with hundreds of other units or the fact that I have been extremely stressed um, over the past couple of months, but my skin has just, she has just not been cooperating with me. I was doing so well for about nine months with no pimples and then just recently, I just can't stop getting breakouts. So I've gone to the dermatologist, I've gone to my esthetician, we're trying to get it under control, but um, something I discovered in the meantime are Mighty Patches. So these are acne patches and I, I really enjoy these things. Well, enjoy is relative just because I wish I didn't have to use them, but because I have to use them, I, I do enjoy them. And you basically put them on pimples that have created like a white head, I guess you would say, or basically the pus has surfaced, but your pimple hasn't popped. That is disgusting. Um, but anyways, uh, yes, you put it on pimples that are kind of ready to pop. They've, they've come to the surface of your face. And what this thing does is it sucks out 
all the germs, all the impurities, all the nasty gunk out of that pimple, and it kind of helps to dry out the pimple. I will say though that it doesn't 100% get rid of your pimple overnight or anything like that. You probably have to put it on your pimple two to three times for it to kind of start to go down and um, deflame, inflame, deflame, basically reduce the redness and the inflammation. But the main reason why I love this is because it stops me from picking my pimples. Because if something is covering my pimple, when I go to touch it or, you know, just pick it out of boredom or out of stress, there's something covering it. And I'm like, it reminds me that I don't need to be picking at my pimple. I can't really speak on other brands. I'm, I feel like they probably all work the same, but Mighty Patch that you can get from Target, Hero Cosmetics, this is it, this is it. And also in the beauty category, I have the Pharmacy Cheer Up Brightening Vitamin C Eye Cream. I love me a good eye cream. My skin is extremely sensitive, but one thing it's not sensitive to is eye cream. So I like to try out different eye creams. Pharmacy sent me a PR package months ago, and I have been using this eye cream since I got it. And my eyes just look a lot more alive, a lot more bright, a lot more moisturized. I also love this because it's not, uh, it doesn't have fragrance in it. There's no, it's just no extraness. It is what it is. You know, it's an eye cream. It's not meant to smell good. It's meant to be an eye cream. That's it. Of course, I didn't buy this one, but I will definitely be buying another jar of this because this is probably gonna run out in the next month or so. But that means it lasted for like four or five months, which is a long time for this little bottle right here. My Roomba is the first thing on my list of home favorites for these last couple of months. This, I need to dust this thing off, it's dusty, ugh. One thing I hate is dog hair. I have a dog, Chance, you wanna come say hi to the camera? Come here, come say hi. Come say hi, oh, oh, say hello people. Say hello friends. Say, I shed so much that mommy had to buy me a Roomba because there's so much of my hair everywhere because it's hot outside and I'm shedding my top coat. Okay, you gotta go. He was shedding his top coat earlier in the summer slash late spring and I just don't, I don't do very well with dog hair and there was a lot of dog hair everywhere. So I ended up getting a Roomba because I was sweeping my floor every single day and it was just taking up way too much of my time. So of course I still do like a deep clean of my floors and things like that, but just day to day, I run this thing once a day or once every other day. It saves me time, it saves me energy. I'm a happy camper because anything to save me time, I am willing to pay for. And the second home thing that I have been loving these past couple months is my Brita water filter cooler. I don't really know what you would call it, but it's basically the Brita filter that sits in your fridge and you dispense water from it. It's not the pitcher. I used to buy bottled water, which I know, I know it's not good for the environment, but I was recycling the bottle. So let just, it's okay. It's okay, I was recycling the bottles. Um, but ever since I've been at home all day, every day, I was running through bottled water every three or four days. It was becoming ridiculous. So I said, you know what? I just need to get a Brita filter and just run my water through there to save me time and money. So yeah, I'm happy I got that and that is my last home favorites. And finally, getting into my entertainment slash content favorites. First is this book right here, Relationship Goals by Michael Todd. <sighs> Y'all, I am kissing 30. I wanna get married. I want to have kids. I want to, you know, do all the things that all the people wanna do. <laughs> and this book has really changed my idea of what I want that to all look like. 
um, because what he talks about in the book and in this in the series, I'm just going to say it really quickly because y'all can watch it. But ultimately, a lot of people base their relationship goals on culture. And that that doesn't make sense because culture is constantly changing. What a good relationship looked like 10, 15, 20, 50 years ago is completely different than what a good relationship or relationship goals goal looks like right now today. But he talks about when you base your relationship goals and what you define as a strong, healthy relationship, it should be based in the word, based in God's truth. And when you do that, because God's word is never changing, ultimately you are basing your relationship goals in something that is real and true and constant. If you are in a relationship, you want to be in a relationship, you're divorced, you're married, you're single, you're widow, like literally any stage of a relationship you're in, this book, it's, it's, it's a good manual or a good guide to kind of start having relationship goals basically and for television i have been watching married at first sight it is just solid entertaining reality television like but it's not trashy well some of it is a little trashy but for the for the most part nah they be they're real it's some trifling folks on there essentially the premise of it is People sign up to be on the show. There are three or four, three experts is what they call them. And um, they basically play matchmaker and they match people to get married at first sight. So the first time these people meet is at their wedding, walking down the aisle and they get married for eight weeks. They basically have to get to know each other. And at the end of the eight weeks, they have to decide whether or not they want to stay married. And there are a lot of couples on there that I just like love. And there's some people on there that I'm like, you know, you just came on here for the publicity. But anyways, that ain't none of my business. That ain't none of my business. And lastly, in music, I have been loving Maverick City music. And they basically are a contemporary gospel Christian, whatever you want to call it, um, collective of people who do live music and live performances and they record all their music live. And y'all, it's just... <sighs> It's just good music. I can't even listen to it when I'm driving because my eyes start watering, my hands start going up in the air. I be having to pull my car over because it's just, it really gets me. So um, if you're looking for like a, a, like a really good, like modern, contemporary, like cool live music, like gospel, Christian, spiritual, um, group or music, definitely check them out uh, because you you will not regret it. So that is it for my recent favorites. If you guys like this sort of chill, me just hanging on the couch, talking about favorites or whatever, give me a thumbs up so I know. Um, I'll see y'all in my next video. Peace.